Get ready to learn strategies and insights from top entrepreneurs, creators, and thought leaders here at the Success, Motivation, and Inspiration Podcast. Here's your host, M. Curtis McCoy. Jen Hardy is a neuro-linguistic trainer, empowerment coach, and public speaker. She's also incredibly cool. Jen and I got to hang out a little bit at the in San Antonio at the Sticker Shock Speaking Academy, and she was phenomenal to listen to on stage. Just so excited to have you here today, Jen. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here with you, Curtis. The first thing I'd like to ask you is, what is your personal definition of success? Mm, my personal definition of success actually has a lot more to do with the journey to success versus the actual success itself. Um, so when I get to the point of achieving something and get to the end of that thing or the result of that thing, if I can look back and know that I have enjoyed the journey, if I can ask myself, am I proud of who I was, how I was being, who I was being along the way, and really enjoying the process as I got there, that to me feels more of a success than actually achieving whatever result it was that I was aiming to achieve. Um, I just, I feel like as a society, sometimes we get so caught up in like, this thing is what we're trying to get to and achieve that we forget that there's a process and a journey along the way that can be really beautiful. I love that. Can you share the steps that you take daily to improve? Oh, boy. Daily steps to improve. Um, Well, I have a saying, um, everything that you want is on the other side of responsibility. So I'm often looking at where do I not have or where am I not being or where am I not doing what I say I want to do or having what I want to have or being who I want to be. And if, if it's not what I want, then I, there's something I need to look at. Like, what am I not doing? Where am I not taking responsibility for the actions I said I would take or being who I said I would be in that moment? And so really taking those times to reflect um, because I am a believer that we create our own reality. So that self introspection, like being willing to look in and see what's really going on, what am, what beliefs are in the way, um, what am I thinking, what old stories or patterns might be getting in the way of having and being and doing what I want. Um, so journaling is a big part of that. Uh, I do have a coach, so I meet with my coach and talk to stuff with her as well. Um, reading, definitely making sure to stay up on reading. I probably, I know there's two different types of people, right? There's the type of people that have one book going and they got to finish that one book or they have like three or four or five books going. I'm the three or four or five books going at once. So, um, you know, either audio booking or, you know, getting that actual physical copy to read. Um, when I like a book even more, I will actually buy a copy of it versus just having the audio book. <laughs> so that's the thing. I mean, staying active, um, getting enough sleep, getting enough sleep. Sleep is precious. <laughs> love that. Hey, and if you guys, just the stuff that we've already covered right now, if you're not, if you're not taking notes here, grab a notebook and make sure you're listening. That, that first list, I'm going to have to listen to this podcast again and take notes myself. So that's, that's some great tips you just shared, Jen. Hey, and then you mentioned having a coach. So this wasn't a question that I said I was going to ask you about, but what are the benefits that you've seen from having a mentor or or coach? Oh yeah. I think everyone should have a mentor or coach (laughs) in some way. Uh, It's probably why it's such a fast growing business, but I, I am a coach myself and there's a lot of things that I can see myself through. I can figure it out. I can talk my way through it. I can use the skills and tools that I've been taught and, and make my way through quite a few things, but we can only see our own way out of so much because our perception is our projection. So if we don't allow someone else to come in and support us with that outside view, we may never see what it is that we can't see to get out of whatever it is we're trying to get out of. Like sometimes you may feel like you're stuck in this box when in reality, you're just standing amongst four pillars that you can walk right out of. But until someone else comes over and goes, hey, you're not in a box. (laughs) How are you supposed to get out of it? (laughs) That's awesome. I've got a client, new coaching client that I'm bringing on this week here. We did our first, our first consulting meeting the other day and guy is just incredibly sharp. You know, I'm just a genius guy, very well accomplished. He's, he's done a ton in his life, made very good money. You know, as we're chatting, you know, and this is not a guy that's need to pay a coach to figure out how to do something. He just needs to figure out maybe a different angle or have that motivation to just keep. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's huge. It's, it's, yeah, a lot of people don't need to know how there's, I mean, some of the most successful people in the world have coaches. They obviously know how to do what they're doing, (laughs) 
but sometimes we just need that that extra perspective to, to realize there's a different route or a different way um, and or we do have a lot of limiting beliefs and stories and things that can get in the way of what we're capable of achieving so having someone that can reframe that for you or, or walk you through how to let that stuff go and not have it be in the way of you getting what you want um, and doing what it is that you're trying to do is really, really useful. And what is your advice for somebody that's making an important decision? Oh, advice for making an important decision. It's kind of a loaded question because I, I could sit here and I could give like a very strict, like, this is what I would do. And the reality is that everybody makes decisions very differently. Our brains all process information differently. So some people really need to go talk to other people and get their input and their insight and like what they would do and how they would do it and what else needs to be considered that I'm not recognizing. And some people only want their own insight and they want to sit and journal and list and go through every piece, right? So it's what what is best for you? How do you process information best? You know, do you need one or the other? Do you need both? Do you need to process and then go talk to someone? Do you need to go talk to someone and then process? Um, I'm a process, talk to someone, reprocess the information. Um, but what I would offer is that you definitely need to look at the outcome. When you're about to make a big decision, sometimes we're just focused on the here and the now, which is great and important. Um, instant but, gratification, huh? Yeah. But what what's going to happen? What's the outcome, the long term, the short term, all of the above, the impact of actually getting what it is you're trying to make a decision on or not getting what it is that you're trying to make a decision on? Like, What's the impact going to be? Um, I actually have a, a long set of questions that I go through with clients who are trying to either set a goal or an intention or make a decision on something about how will this impact you? What will it look like? What will it sound like? What will it feel like? You know, what will the benefit be? What will it not do for you if you don't get it? Like there's all of these questions from all of these different angles to really get the brain thinking outside of what we normally tend to stick ourselves into when we're making a decision, which I would love to offer to your to your viewers if they're interested in getting that list to help them make more informed decisions. <laughs> if you guys aren't connected with Jen yet, I typically throw this in at the end of the show, but get a, get a hold of Jen on, uh, she's got a MailChimp list that'll be dropped in the podcast show notes here. And then get a hold of her on uh, Facebook at JH Breakthroughs mm -hmm. or and underscore unstoppable underscore you on Instagram. But just look up Jen Hardy. She's awesome. You need to be connected with her, even if you're not looking to become a client. That's right. Thank you. Okay. So you're a coach now. And what else, what all is it that you're doing as far as business goes? Yeah, my business has been ever evolving over the last few years. So I, I did start out with one-on-one -on -one coaching, empowerment coaching, mainly with women, but I've definitely not turned down men that need the support. Um, and then that evolved into having clients who really enjoyed the process of what I was doing and how easy it is so much so that they're like, I want to know how you do what you do. So my coach told me, you have people who want to pay you to learn how to do what you do. Why haven't you hosted a training yet? Yeah. <laughs> And so that was my kick in the pants last September to step back into my role of teacher and start hosting certification programs. So I do host actual certifications to become certified as a neurolinguistic practitioner, a breakthrough performance coach, and to be certified as a practitioner of quantum time techniques, um, formerly known as timeline therapy, so that they can implement these this modality and these skills and these tools into whatever area of life makes sense for them. And, uh, and now, as you know, also stepping into motivational and, and keynote speaking wherever I can get the chance to do that. So that right now looks like doing, you know, lunch and learns or actually getting on stages and doing talks wherever I can. Um, so it's really evolving and growing and it's, it's a really fun journey so far. That's awesome. And I'd like to mention you crushed it in San Antonio. It was great hearing <laughs> you speak. Thank you. I loved hearing you speak as well, man. You do, you sure do make people go, I have no excuses whatsoever. <laughs> Appreciate that. Can you tell me about a specific moment that set you on the path that you're on right now? Mm, I can. Absolutely. Well, there's a few, but the one that, that really sent me into specifically neurolinguistics, quantum time techniques, hypnosis, all these types of things, um, and the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the, um, the certification programs was working with my now full-time coach, but at the time she was my um, co-director of a mastermind that I was with, that I was in with about eight to 10 other women. And we got a few 30 minute sessions with her. And in 30 minutes, she sat me down and we did some also known as QTT, quantum time techniques. And I let go of some things that had been weighing on me for decades. 
in about 15 minutes. It was so impactful and fast and amazing. And how I felt as soon as we were finished, I was like, what in the world was that? Because I mean, I've been to traditional therapy, done that route, uh, was in counseling for a year to deal with whatever things were going on for me. And in 15 minutes, there was a drastic shift physiologically, mentally, emotionally. And I guess a lot like my now clients, I was like, what was that? <laughs> How do I do that? How do I learn that? And uh, she did happen to have her own training company, Jaeger Training in Austin. And so I actually spent all of COVID, the, when for COVID first hit, just bulldozing through um, all of the, the knowledge and all of the education and went through um, my practitioner training and went through my master's training, went through my trainer's training, um, because it was just, I've seen so many people go through different versions of therapy and counseling, medication, all of the different things, and they're doing it for years and years and decades or life. And for me, it's like, that doesn't make sense. Like if, if you're healing and if you're getting better, you should be progressing forward where you may not necessarily need medication anymore. I know there are, I know that there are chemical imbalances and that's a wholly different topic. Um, but like when I hear someone dealing with the same problem over and over and over and over and over again for decades, like that. You shouldn't be an individual profit center for your psychologist, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So I just, I, I want this, I want this in the hands of anybody who works with people in any sense, right? If you're in a leadership role, if you're in a counseling role, if you're working with kids, oh my gosh, right? If you're working with kids, um, anyone who has a chance to make an impact, like this has a chance to make a big impact fast. And it was just, it was so attractive to me to know that I could support people to make a change and make a shift um, quickly that I, I just jumped on the bandwagon so fast and just all the way through within a year. <laughs> I love that. What's your website? Is there a, is it best to get a hold of you on social media or what's the best way to get to reach out to you on? Website get, is still uh, under construction. <laughs> so the best way to get a hold of me is definitely through social media right now. Um, you can also email me. It's uh, JLH, Jennifer Lynn Hardy. So JLH style, S T Y L E, because I am a stylist on the side. Uh, so JLH style 512 at gmail.com is also perfectly acceptable. Um, but I am on all the social medias on IG and LinkedIn and Facebook and all of the things. Um, I'm usually one of the few gens that has one N in her name. So it makes me a little easier to find. <laughs> nice. If you could recommend one book for our audience, what would that book be? I have to do that kind of like, it, <laughs> I'm like one book, I'm going to challenge that and be one book for the guys and one book for the girls. <laughs> and actually, if you've got a list that you think are beneficial, oh, drop them all. I have a massive list. Um, in fact, all of my clients that are involved in our educational programs, we have a, we actually have it shared on a Google doc to just add to constantly <laughs> because oh, we nice. keep coming up with all these books. I think we're up to about 28 on our current list of books. I think a great one for women to start with is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Um, I cried, I laughed, I empathized, I sympathized, I felt things shift and move. I saw myself in her and what she was going through. And it, it's just such a beautiful book. Um, and it has so many fantastic quotes and, and paraphrasing moments that I've even pulled some of them into my trainings to share with people um, because I love them so much. And uh, it's one of the first books that I recommend to most of my clients to read, um, Untamed, and then also Unbound since I'm on the uns right now, Unbound by uh, Cassia Urbank. And it's it's a woman's guide to power. And what's really amazing about this book is that she traveled the world um, to become a, a Taoist monk and she paid for it by being a dominatrix. So it's just this really interesting, complex, um, it's just, it's amazing. It's a great book. Um, every woman should definitely read that. And then for the gentleman, I would say um, Daring Greatly. Brene Brown. Brene Brown, yep. Oh, absolutely. And I've just heard that Atlas of the Heart is absolutely fantastic and I've downloaded it, haven't read it yet. But the gentleman, Daring Greatly, is if you ever feel like you have a hard time understanding women, might be a thing, <laughs> or connecting with women in some way. Daring Greatly is so insightful, I think, for men to discover their own vulnerability and how much we as women cherish and appreciate that aspect of men, even though it seems like it's supposed to be shoved down and not let out. There's the one piece in, in the book that has, is why I feel like I, I was like, oh man, every guy, every guy needs to read this too, but so does every woman. 
Um, but it, it was an insight for me with men too. There was a, a moment, so she's talking about being in a counseling session and this woman bursts into tears and gets really upset. And she's talking about um, how uncomfortable, uncomfortable she feels in intimate situations and how she's always worried about, you know, how fat she might look or how unattractive she might look and her back fat and this and that. And the guy that's also in the same counseling session slams his hand down and he says, it's not about the back fat. And I, I, I don't know why. I mean, it made me laugh, but it also made me like, oh, like he and then he comes, he follows in with just like, you know, it's not about the back fat. It's about wanting to know that you respect us and you love us and that we think you're beautiful, incredible creatures. And the ones out there who don't, they're not it. And they're not all of us. And it was just awesome. such a... Uh, it was such a cool moment. And I was like, I want every man to read this too, because there were so many just incredible moments in there. Um, so those are, those are some of my top three, but again, I have lots, lots and lots and lots. <laughs> I could see that being a popular tattoo. You know, people get different quotes and sayings and stuff, but it's not about the back fat. We might <laughs> <laughs> maybe turn that into a tattoo trend. That would be an interesting tattoo trend. Mm, yes. That would be interesting. Uh, what character traits do you value the most, whether that's in yourself or in others? Mm. You know, when when I think about that, I realize that they really do parallel from me and what I respect most in others. Um, but my number one is communication. Neurolinguistics is the science of communication. Um, I taught communications in high school for 12 years. I was a high school teacher. Um, I love communication. And I, I do believe it is the essence and breadth of, of life being able to communicate because being able to communicate, we're actually able to relate and, and really emote and deepen a connection with somebody else. And it's just such a beautiful thing to be able to actually hear, but also be heard and understand and be understood and be seen, but also see. Um, so I love communication and I respect anyone who's willing to like dig into the uncomfortable things, even though it may not feel good and it might be a little yucky. Like, I want to have that conversation. Let's, let's have that conversation. Even if we disagree, like, let's have that conversation. It could be interesting. Um, so communication is number one, curiosity, um, passion, authenticity, uh, and integrity are also really big. Um, and then people who have that underlying, that drive, which I think really does line up with passion as well. Like having a passion for what it is that you do. So much so that it gets almost hard like me to make you shut up when you start talking about what you really, really love because you just want to like, I want to tell you everything about it. Um, and then authenticity, integrity. I mean, I just, people who are unafraid to be themselves. And I mean, that's something I've been practicing myself. Um, that was a big breakthrough for me with the work that I do is learning to be authentic in who I am with anyone. And, and not having to put on this hat or this face here and there, just being unapologetically who you are. That's powerful. That's one of the things that I really appreciated and enjoyed talking to you when we got to meet up in San Antonio there was just how authentic and like I, I could tell, you know, there's a lot of people you go to these seminars and conferences. There's usually a hundred people there that are just trying to pass out as many business cards as possible and they're never going to follow up, never going to, but, but they just want to tell you, Hey, I'm John Smith. I'm the old man repair. You know, yeah. you know I could care less what the guy's <laughs> saying because he doesn't care what I'm, you know, he's not, not there to meet, make that connection or whatever. But mm -hmm. When we started talking, we just had that uh, had that connection. And it was going, you really care about what somebody's saying. And I, I watched you with other people making that connection. You're doing the eye contact and people are talking to you, just just pouring into you like because they can feel that that that's one of the few people that are actually asking a question because they because you care about what people are saying. I really appreciate yeah. that with with you and makes you a real draw for people want to want to talk with and connect to. Well, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's 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 a huge compliment. I really, really, really appreciate you saying that. <laughs> Absolutely. If you've got a parting thought for our audience, I already dropped the stuff on how to, you know, the links on how to get a hold of you. But mm -hmm. so again, if you guys aren't connected with Jen yet, find Jen Hardy, J E N H A R D Y on social media, get connected. Jen is awesome. You want to know her. Jen, I appreciate you so much for being on the show today. It's just been an incredible conversation again that we need to stay in contact. And I've got one more question for you if you've got time. Absolutely. If you could share one parting thought with our audience, one thing that they need to remember or something you would put on a billboard, what is that? So if you've never read, read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, it's also a really great book. <laughs> Stephen Covey has some really great quotes. I've pulled so many things from him. Um, but one of my favorites is that uh, courage is not the absence of fear. 
It's just the recognition that there's something else more important on the other side. And I, I say that one because there's times when I, I get acknowledgement for being inspirational and like being willing to step out and, you know, leave a 12 year career to go for my dream. And people are like, oh, I could never do that and this and that. And you're so courageous and all these things. And I, it's hard sometimes to not feel a little bit like an imposter, like, oh, if they only knew. <laughs> I'm terrified all the time. But I also recognize that there's something more important on the other side. That's powerful. Thank you yeah. again so much for being on, Jen. That was a good conversation today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Thanks for letting me be here. That's it for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the Success, Motivation, and Inspiration podcast. Head over to mcurtismccoy.com for show notes and more tools to fuel your passion.